picking your first astro telescope for astrophotography, it can be a difficult decision, especially in today's era of high prices. Now, if we went back a couple weeks ago, I probably would have had a different answer than I do now. I would have said definitely a small refractor. That is really what got me taking some of the best shots that I've ever taken in my life. But after watching this gentleman on YouTube, Sky Story, who lives up in the great wilderness of Canada, I am firmly in the camp now that I believe the SCT is definitely the best way to go for beginners or even someone advanced like myself. I've owned a few of them. Let's talk about it now on the channel. I'm Chad. This is the Easy Astro images channel let's talk about collecting some photons tonight so you might see behind me over here over here yeah it's right there i still have my rc6 which is a richie Crichton. but the reason why i just think that the sct is definitely the scope to go with is it's just the most flexible scope that you can get bar none. This is a legacy scope that has been around forever. It's available in all kinds of different sizes. There is a huge, huge market out there for used telescopes. Just take a look at this deal right here on cloudy nights for less than half the price of the telescope and all of its combined accessories, focal reducers, and everything else. You cannot beat this. This is just extreme value. And these are over and over and over in all sizes. Six inch, eight inch, nine and a quarter. That's the largest one that I have ever owned. It was a beast. It was an awesome telescope. I used it back in the day when we did live video imaging EAA with modified security cameras. Now the flexibility of the SCT is amazing. It's got kind of this nice, perfect boxy size. There's no big focuser hanging off the back of it. It's all built in internally. ZWO, whoever makes automatic focusers for it that are super easy to install and operate. So you've got more of this compact size. You don't have this unwielding eight, 10, 12 inch type of reflector, or even, you know, a refractor that is very long. And then you got to figure out how to mount things, this and that, everything else. Having dovetail bars on the top, the bottom, you can extend the dovetails. It gives you total flexibility to mount things like your mini PC, ASI Air, and all of that kind of stuff anywhere on the telescope itself. So there's tons of accessories that can go with this thing. The biggest thing we need to talk about though is most people that buy one of these are also going to add this, which is the Celestron F6.3 focal reducer. Most of the SCTs from Celestron are run at about an F10 focal ratio, have a long focal length. So they're meant to like zoom in. So they're great for planets. They're great for close up shots on small pieces of nebula, but you can keep going further and further out with these things. That reducer at 170 bucks actually comes with that package deal from that seller that I was showing you just now. And if you want to get even crazier, there's this thing, which hasn't been around forever it is the star Arizona night owl, which would screw right into the back. You would screw your camera on it and it literally almost turns your SCT into a hyperstar, but Unfortunately, it hasn't been around for quite some time. Not really sure what's going on with that. But the, if you really want to go and crank up and just totally go crazy with your SCT, you can always go with the Hyperstar V4. Now, this thing, of course, is pricey now. It's a thousand bucks. That's without a filter drawer or anything else like that. And this is going to take your imaging train and move it to the front of your SCT. And then you're going to put the hyperstar, the camera and all that stuff on there. And it is going to turn your S your, your C eight now into a 390 millimeter focal length F 1.9 telescope with a 4.1 degree field of view. Take all that information and plug that into some of your astro calculators and just look at the difference in image scale from 400 and 390 to whatever it is out of the box. The whole point being though, is that 
you can just keep going and changing with this telescope. A lot of people kind of give them a bad name. The optics aren't the best. They've got the edge version, which gives you a little bit better stuff for photography. It's all true, but today's day and age with software, you can really fix a lot of these issues. Big reason why I recommend the C8 over the C6. The C6 Hyperstar was something that I owned actually a couple years ago, and it was really good, but it was very difficult to work with at times because the C6 just was not made the way that the C8 is. Mainly what happened is the rear of the actual, you know, your exit tube per se, where your camera and all that stuff goes, was a lot more narrower than what the C8 has. So it really affected like your actual uh, image, you know, the light coming into it, the light cone. So you got some weird vignetting and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely would not recommend a C6. I would go right to the C8. The other thing I wouldn't recommend is Celestron makes these electronic dew heaters. So I installed one of those on my C6 as well. And not thinking about using it with Hyperstar and everything else, I wasn't then able to properly use things like my batten off filters and stuff without cutting them into pieces and all this stuff. Just go ahead and use a dew shield and use a dew heater band when you get to that point because you're gonna want that dew shield anyway uh, you can pop a flat panel on it to do your flats, all that kind of stuff. So to just make things way easier, you can get all kinds of dovetails and accessories to mount onto the SCT2. A lot of these will work with any telescopes, but there's just, you can do so much by having that top and bottom rail. Really, really love that stuff. You can never have enough dovetails or plates inside of your kit. That is for sure. Some people, again, will probably poo-poo over image quality and like collimation and all that. I don't really think you'll ever have to worry about that at all. These things are super solid when it comes to collimation. I would throw mine around. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. Carrying it in and out, in and out, in and out. It's nowhere near as temperamental as something like a Newtonian. And a lot of, and as some of you might've seen on some other YouTube channels, people that are experimenting with these Newtonians are not having a good time. I mean, maybe they are, but they're getting a lot of content by constantly throwing money and trying to upgrade these things. And then when another manufacturer brings a new version out, we're kind of hoping that it corrects some of these issues. Oh, hi, Lucky. But the problem is, is it doesn't really correct all of them. The SCT is tried and true. Biggest thing I, I advice I would ever have for you is if you get one and you want to take it apart, clean it, all that kind of stuff, definitely make a lot of witness marks on stuff. And you can do this with like tape. You can do this with a Sharpie. You can do this with a fine point something. You want to make sure where you remove the secondary mirror that when you pop it out, if you want to clean it or if you add Hyperstar, that everything lines up. Like where you pull it out, that part of the mirror lines up exactly with that part on the actual ring, which then again will line up down with the primary mirror and all that kind of stuff. Also be very careful when you are taking the focuser apart because if you are holding it the wrong way, the focuser can actually fall out and you will get some primary mirror shifting. So always kind of like stick it up on its side. Don't, uh, you know, don't try to like do it like this. This cat, I tell you, it doesn't know I'm filming a video. So the flexibility of the scope can get you in trouble, but just take your time and make sure you do what you're doing. So yeah, I mean, check out some of Sky Stories videos and look what he was doing. All that money that you can save by buying one of these UC8s, you can plop that right into a camera and a filter and you are like ready to go. As a matter of fact, when I get my setup back up and running, one of the very first upgrades that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably end up replacing that RC6 with an SC8, with a C8 and all the goodies, and I am just gonna love it. Hyperstar, now that might have to wait a little bit. Hope you guys learned something, and if you have any questions about these C8s or anything, let me know. I've owned multiples of them over the years. Hopefully we can help you guys out. Big shout out to all of my channel members right here on the screen. Hopefully one of these days we can shrink these fonts and fill this screen up. Welcome to the community. I'm very, very blessed to have you guys here with me.